That's 201-784-9600. Now that uh, the waterfall is quiet, just like the Royals have been here in this three-game series, they trail 10 to 1. And we remind you, the Knicks 98-81 winners in Game 5 today, the advance in the playoffs, and a special edition on our MSG Sports Desk of highlights and post-game interviews from that game. Al Troutwig putting that show together right now as we speak, and you can see it at 7 o'clock. MSG sports desk first pitch fouled out of play by Brocious against the new Kansas City pitcher Jeff Montgomery. He is their closer. So without uh, any opportunities in this series to save a lead or save a ball game. He's going to pitch in a blowout. More than a hit per inning but usually a strikeout per inning and that's because of the pitch he just threw to Brocious. Good slider. He is. Uh, Moved up on the list now 36 years old he is into 11th spot all time right behind Doug Jones who is still active. On the all time saves list. Kansas City has uh, made some trades recently that have not been good ones. No pun intended with Tom Goodwin. Now playing for the Texas Rangers but. One of the better ones this organization made was the guy in the mound. They got Jeff Montgomery from Cincinnati for ooh, caught Brocious. Looked like an off speed pitch that just got away. Traded Montgomery for Van Snyder, the uh, Cincinnati Reds, an outfielder that never played much in the big leagues. Well, wow, Brocious just about caught this pitch in the fold of his right arm. Watch it right near the elbow there. Looked like a running fastball moving in on him. No damage done. And Homer Bush will step in. Slider, strike one. Homer will have a chance to get on the telephone tonight, tell his buddies about the day he's had filling in for Chuck Knobloch. Not going to get a lot of playing time, but he's taking advantage of what he does get. You know, if you're an irregular player, don't get a chance. Those day games after those night games, gotta be, gotta be leery. You might get in there. Chuck Knobloch nursing that uh, hand injury. We talked about at the top of the show on his glove hand, kind of like a uh, a bone bruise you would expect a catcher to get. But Joe Torre feels taking the day off all day tomorrow, and then the Yankees play Tuesday night. It's almost like getting three days off. Could be two. Offerman to Martinez. Could slide by Brocious. Wow. I mean that's that's good hard baseball when you're up by nine runs in the ninth inning at Brocious. I don't know if he caught Martinez or Martinez twisted his ankle coming down. It looked like he caught a piece of it. That might be a little vengeance for getting hit by the pitch also on Brocious's part. Well it's good hard baseball number one. You're trying to break up a double play and there's the slide and Martinez trying to get out of the way and he's going to stay down. He's still not up off of the turf. Trying to Nick Schwartz out there to attend to it. And there was a play earlier in the season with Otis Nixon of the Minnesota Twins sliding into Martinez and Martinez kicked him in the jaw and broke his jaw. And one of the reasons why Brocious was able to get down on him right there at second base is because Offerman bobbled the ground ball to begin with. There you can see the good hard slide by Brocious. And uh, Martinez just now walking around out there at second base. Yeah, he's had no problems in Kansas City, but his history, he's he's had a bit of a volatile temper. And uh, some of his antics actions on the field not being one of them an intentional kick of uh, Otis Nixon in fact Nixon I think just had some surgery to to uh, set that fractured jaw so Soho taking ball one originally he tried to play with the injury with his jaw just wired shut but he did have to go in and have some surgery and although Martinez did apologize to him later for the incident it still didn't look good on the on tape. Oh. He stays in the ball game. One down now in the Yankee ninth, and uh, Luis Soho is first at bat. So, ball and a strike. 
Let me correct that winning streak. Today's win would be five straight for the Yankees, not four. Tough to keep up with them. Some more scores. Good complete game effort by Darren Oliver, even though he lost it. Cleveland comes back to beat Tampa Bay. They scored 10. Baltimore shut out Minnesota. And Toronto leads Oakland by a pair. Delgado, Carlos Delgado with a home run for Toronto. Just underway in Seattle, no score. So Cleveland comes back. They've uh, sputtered a bit in that American League Central, but Sandy Alomar hits a grand slam home run in the bottom of the ninth. Fouled out of play, still two and two to Soho. And the Orioles winning today. I think that Mike Mussina came off the disabled list, and uh, he might have had a lot to do with that shutout mm -hmm. today. Welcome uh, addition to that. Oriole pitching staff that had been struggling a bit and he defeated Eric Milton the fine young left hander that the Yankees traded away short right field Offerman out makes the over the shoulder basket catch and Bush will have to hustle back to first two down now the Yankee ninth so today Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday five day rotation we'll see Milton Friday night in Minnesota nice running catch by Offerman over the shoulder in the Three Royals converge, but it's off him in the second baseman who makes the play. O'Neal one for four and three RBIs. A solo home run, a walk with the bases loaded, and a ground ball in the first inning. Eric Milton pitched eight innings today, just uh, four hits and two runs. So I think the uh, the Twins quite happy so far with the with the trade, even though they had to give up an All-Star second baseman and Chuck Knobloch. Knobloch will be back in the lineup Tuesday against uh, the Texas Rangers. Mentioned the four of the top ten hitters in the American League as well as the production of Juan Gonzalez. But Will Clark back on track this year. Tenth in the American League in hitting. Breaking ball misses to O'Neill. Two and one. The Yankees have outscored the Royals by nine today and out hit them by 10. 13 hits for the Yankees, just three for the Royals. And first strike, and it's two and two to O'Neill. You know, we get late in a ball game like this. Jeff Montgomery, really, he's getting his work in. But for Paul O'Neill at the plate, it's a big lead. You don't want to give it bats away. I, I, you know these things come back to haunt you and it's hard to concentrate when you're up by nine runs and it's the top of the ninth inning in the air to right is it hit deep enough it's carrying out that way Sutton is at the track and it's going to stay in the ballpark like he just got it on the end of the pad and now O'Neill is staring that down and saying I hit that ball better than I did the home run we're heading to the bottom of the ninth Yankees need three outs to complete the sweep they lead it 10 to 1. Back after this. That's my dad, Roger Bear. And that's me when I was four. I practically grew up on skates. Yeah, I was going to be a Hall of Famer just like him. You know, thousands of fans cheering me on. Then, right about the time I got to juniors, it started to dawn on me. What I really needed from my dad was some help paying for college. Luckily, dad had been saving all along. Now I'm working on my master's degree in uh, physical therapy. Call 1-800-THE-DIME. How can GEICO save you money on car insurance when you buy from us directly? We cut out the middleman. GEICO. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. A typical car insurance agent is on the job during regular business hours. On the other hand, GEICO insurance professionals are on the job 24 hours a day. GEICO. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Where's technology going? Photonics, pharmaceuticals, biotech. They're coming to Connecticut to grow. Software companies here are growing faster than in Silicon Valley itself. Since January of 96, more than 450 high-tech firms were launched from here in Connecticut, capitalizing on some of the most highly skilled workers in the world. 
Call us and see how much power we can put behind your business. Yankees. We head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Day off tomorrow. And then from the ballpark at Arlington, Tuesday night, David Cohn will take the mound against veteran right hander John Burkett. It's an 8 30 East Coast start pregame show at 7. Then Wednesday night, the same two teams. David Wells for the Yankees against Bobby Witt. Should be a great series. The Rangers off to one of the best starts in years and the Yankees off to their best start in over 40 years. Willie Banks with a chance to get an innings worth of work. Young man from Jersey City trying to knock down that ERA that got uh, inflated early in the season. He's been pitching much better since then. Only four innings of work a chance for uh, Willie to try and close this one out. Joe Torre getting just about everybody involved in this series and the Yankees as you said Kitty just three outs away from a a sweep of the Kansas City Royals and they roll on. The Yankees the only team in Major League Baseball undefeated when they score at least four runs. Uh, this would put them at 16 and 0. First pitch to Pendleton in first strike and you mentioned last inning about how even in blowout games hitters don't want to give up at bats. And put yourself in Willie Banks shoes he had a great spring made the ball club. But he struggled a bit. There's a leadoff single for Pendleton. So this inning, even though the Yankees lead 10-1, is important to him. When Graham Lloyd comes back on the active list, the Yankees will have to make a pitching decision. Mike Buddy has proved that he's doing a creditable job. Uh -huh. So Willie Banks knows that. Here's the veteran Dean Palmer. Side for a ball. Palmer's day, one for three with a double. Another fastball. Well, Willie Banks has one of the best changeups in baseball. When he was a starter for the Minnesota Twins, that really was his pitch. Probably the best game he pitched as a big leaguer was against the Oakland A's several years ago. Double digit strikeouts and a lot of them on the changeup. Counts now two and one, but when you come out of the bullpen, you tend to just rear back and throw and you don't blend your pitches in as much. That's probably something Willie will have to learn to do pitching out of the bullpen. No swing and it's three and one. He does have a pretty good curveball, too, but as you said, you, you got to get ahead of the hitters and basically do that with your fastball. Yeah, as a reliever, you become more of a thrower. Most of your good relievers, Palmer walks and there's two on but nobody out. Most of your relievers are one pitch pitchers, rely on one specialty pitch, and they don't change speeds and mix other pitches in as well as as starters do. Well, tonight at 7:30 p.m., we mentioned the special edition of the uh, Knicks post-game show. That's at 7 o'clock, but at 10:30 p.m. we Invite you to join us for the regular edition of the MSG Sports Desk. And then at midnight, if you've missed any of the day's action and all of the sports going on today, you can catch it at Fox Sports New York at midnight tonight. Ball one to Larry Sutton and Willie Banks having a little difficulty getting the first out here in the ninth inning. That's in first strike. You know, I'm looking for you mentioned the Texas Rangers coming up on Tuesday night. I'm looking forward to seeing those guys too because I want to see what Yvonne Rodriguez can do to the Yankees run again. That, that should yeah. be fun. I mean he, he made the statement the other day. He said you know to sit back there without any base runners and not throw is kind of boring for a catcher. And he didn't mean it from a cocky standpoint. He just said it's kind of fun to to see other teams try to steal on him. That's in for a strike and it's two and two. And, you know if the Yankees get on base they're they're going to challenge it. I mean you can't back down from the type of game you're playing even though you have the, the best throwing catcher in baseball back there. Tapped out in front of the plate. Posada will take the sure out at first. Pendleton and Palmer advance. 
And that's the first out of the ninth. The catcher, Chris Turner. Yeah, there should be uh, as quiet as things have been here in Kansas City. Not too much to cheer for for the Royals, but that should be a pretty exciting two nights of baseball at the ballpark at Arlington. I'm sure the Texas fans are anticipating the uh, Yankees coming in. and should have good crowds for both those ball games. Looking at Mr. Turner up there at the plate with that black eye. We mentioned he was hit by a pitch by Juan Guzman in Toronto. But it's the lead eye. I'm thinking he must might have a little trouble seeing. You know, in his first at bat of the game today, he hit the ball well to center field. And I, I think that's always the telltale sign. It was a, a great center fielder for your former team, the Orioles, Paul Blair. His his career was turned completely around when he was uh, hit in the jaw with a fastball from Ken Tatum. Ground foul. I had a ex teammate Jimmy Hall, terrific left hand hitter. Bo yeah. Belinsky hit him, and he was never the same hitter after that wow. because, you know, once you get hit, uh, that I'm sure those next couple at bats are the crucial ones to say, I'm, I'm going to hang in there and show the pitchers I won't be intimidated. Well, I remember Reggie Jackson getting hit by Doc Ellis in Baltimore. The one year that Reggie was with the Orioles, Doc Ellis of the Yankees hit Reggie. I mean, he hit him good. Just his, by the time Reggie got to the dugout, his whole side of his face was swollen up and of course a few days later Reggie came back to play and everybody thought how's he going to be affected first time up a three run homer he's oh, he's OK right that's that sends the message Yankees thought they may have had a strike there that misses strike zone is about a ball smaller all the way around in today's game with the Dakinger behind the plate. And that's high. The count is full. Waiting on deck is Felix Martinez. Good fastball by Banks and Turner's down on strike. So the Yankees one out away from their 20th win. Well, nothing fancy here. A challenging 3-2 fastball right down the middle, up right over the bat of Chris Turner. Remember that old song, Don't Get Around Much Anymore? <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. So, as they say in the Yankee dugout, here's the guy we've been looking for since 1 o'clock. The last out of the game, and it's Felix Martinez. who's pitch high for a ball. Red Sox also won their 20th game today. Even though in the standings they are a game and a half behind the Yankees, the Red Sox 20 and 9, the Yankees would be 20 and 6. In the air to short center, but Bernie Williams is standing right there. And the sweep is completed. Ramiro Mendoza gets his first win. The Yankees pound out 13 hits. Homer Bush has a nice day filling in for Chuck Knobloch. And Joe Torrey just says, write the names in and stay out of the way and enjoy the ride while they can. 19 of their last 21, the Yankees have won. They have done that little victory walk out there behind the diamond an awful lot in the last few weeks lots to talk about here from Kauffman Stadium as the Yankees score 10 runs and they win it 10 one back on MSG after this.
wanted. Drivers with good, bad, and ugly credit. No matter what your past credit history, call Auto Solutions toll free at 1 888 423 Auto. Your reward? Free qualification for instant automotive credit. It's fast, it's easy, and it's absolutely free. 1 888 423 Auto. To be pre approved today. The Auto Solutions Auto Loan Phone is completely automated, so it's hassle-free and completely confidential. This is your chance to re-establish your credit without the pressure of a salesman or the hassle of paperwork. First-time buyer, divorce, repossession, slow pay, even bankruptcies. Call now. Even with less than perfect credit, you can pre-qualify for the pre-owned vehicle you've always wanted. 1-888-423-AUTO. Call Auto Solutions, the loan arrangers, for your reward. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Holyfield is a battle-tested warrior. He's beaten everyone from George Foreman to Mike Tyson. But now he's got another war on his hands against six foot seven Henry Akinwande. He's the number one contender and wants to be champion again. Holyfield versus Akinwande, plus Joppy versus Durant, Johnny Tapia, and Christy Martin. D-Day at the Garden, Saturday, June 6th. Tickets on sale now at the Garden box office and all Ticketmaster outlets. Welcome back to Kansas City where the Yankees complete the sweep of the 10-1 win. Let's check it out at the Jeep Eagle game summary. 10 runs, 13 hits. Ramiro Mendoza with seven innings of very effective pitching allowed just one run. Paul O'Neill got his first home run of the season. Jorge Posada added a solo, a solo shot, his fourth. And the Yankees have won 19 of their last 21 games. Let's take a look, Kenny, at our Dodge long drive of the game. No surprise. It's certainly a milestone home run for Paul O'Neill as he will hit his first home run of the season. And it kind of seems strange to say that in May with Paul O'Neill. But this is also career home run number 200. So a milestone home run for Paul O'Neill. Congratulations to but Paul. We'll see if he got that uh, souvenir baseball retrieved from behind the right field wall. We, we're accustomed to seeing Paul O'Neill, Tino Martinez, but you remember those days when you weren't an everyday player and you got a chance to get in there once in a while and you wanted to make the most of it. Homer Bush is standing by. He certainly did. Well, certainly Homer didn't want anything to go wrong with him at second base. The Yankees have been playing pretty well. And Homer, congratulations on a great day. Thanks a lot, Ken. Homer, uh, you grew up a Cardinal fan. You told me you wore number one. You loved Ozzie Smith. So St. Louis is not too far from here. And you had some of your family members uh, get a chance to enjoy your day to day with you. That's what I did, Jim. Uh, my mom stayed and um, I got some nieces and nephews, uh, some cousins. It was good to see them for one. And uh, for them to get a chance to see me play it was awesome. Did you have any indication you were going to be in the lineup today or just was it a surprise when you came to the ballpark? You know, it was, it was a surprise as far as me starting, but uh, last night I kind of convinced my mom to stay because I figured that, you know, it's going to be kind of warm. I heard it's going to be about 70, <laughs> 75 degrees, and the guys were going to get, get it going, and uh, I sort of stick around. I might get in that bat two tomorrow, not knowing that I would start, but, I mean, it was, like, uh, wonderful. When I got in there into the clubhouse, all I did was pick up the phone and call back to the hotel. I, I was a little concerned there. We saw a little bit of your speed, but after you beat out that butt, you kind of reached down for that hammy on the left side. Any ill effects from that? Uh, no, I should be all right. Uh, it's a little sore, uh, but uh, I should be okay. Um, I think with the day off tomorrow, ice it, get some treatment, I should be ready. Here's that butt base hit right here. We also saw you steal the base. You didn't hesitate right away. You just took off. Right. We, um, I had some adrenaline going. I told Jeter, <laughs> I said, hey, if I get on my first at bat, just uh, fake a butt for me because I'm going first pitch because, you know, they knew that it was my first day playing in a while, and they weren't thinking that I was going to be as aggressive as I was today. I had a chance to talk with Jamie Quirk, the Royals bench coach, today before the ball game, and he had some awfully nice things to say. Uh, about you as a person as well as a player you had a chance to play for him in the Arizona Fall League. Yes I did. Uh, I had a lot of fun you know um, you know Jamie you know I didn't know him because he was from the Royals and I was from San Diego and uh, he kind of like welcomed me with open arms when I got to Arizona and made sure that I was okay and uh, t really took care of me and so I thought that was really awesome. What was that experience like in the Arizona Fall League? You see many more players coming in that league into the big leagues. Yeah. You know it's great because you know you, for one you don't have to leave the country. Two, you're playing most most of uh, your games are day games, and you're off the field by five, and you can spend the rest of the time with your family or, you know, whoever, you know, at night. So, you know, you go there and you play hard for about three, three and a half hours, and, hey, you just go home and relax for the rest of the day. 
Homer, it must be a lot of fun sit, even when you're not playing to sit on the bench and watch this team just roll on game after game. That's true. Um, you know, I'm hoping that I can stick around because, man, this this, uh, this team has really done a lot of awesome things. You know, I mean, as you know, a lot of guys are not hitting for power, but the way they manufacture runs around here is incredible. Any players that uh, you've been hanging out with giving you sort of advice on how to be a Major League Baseball player? You know, pretty much everybody. Um, you know, it uh, depends on what situation is, especially with pitching. You know, I try to um, talk to the pitchers a lot and say, you know, late in the game like this, oh, just throw a little guy like this, you know. And, you know, they'll let me know if they, uh, they've they known this guy in the past and, uh, you know, what kind of hitter he is. So I pretty much can relate to the, the position player part of it. I just want to learn how to uh, recognize pitches and, you know, see what pitches are going to be thrown to me in certain counts. Homer, thanks so much for your time. Congratulations on your good day. Have a good trip to Texas, and we'll see you at the ballpark at Arlington. Thanks for having me, Jim and Ken. We'll step aside for a few moments. The Yankees win at 10-1. Lots more to talk about here on MSG when we come back after this. get into baseball then get baseball weekly you'll get the best and most complete major league coverage expert advice for fantasy players an insider's view of big league baseball minor league reports on top major league prospects and much more subscribe now so you won't miss a pitch and get the 1998 baseball weekly almanac free you'll get complete stats from 97 team by team reviews and 98 previews a 1495 value so call now and you'll get 52 action packed issues of baseball weekly for just 77 cents an issue plus the 1998 almanac free with your paid order so if you want the game the whole game and nothing but the game get baseball weekly Well, the final score from Kansas City, the Yankees complete the sweep. They win it 10 to 1. Ramiro Mendoza wins his first. They beat the veteran Tim Belcher. His record falls to 1 and 4. Coming up next, our G Beagle post game report. Michael K. And then on Tuesday night, we'll be back with you starting at 8 o'clock with our New York Marriott Yankees scorecard. And of course, the special edition of the Knicks post game show tonight at 7 o'clock on MSG. Well, about the only entertainment the Royals fans had was from the San Diego Chicken. All smiles in the Yankee dugout. Couple of home runs. Jorge Posada got a solo shot to complete the three-game sweep. A long afternoon for Tim Belcher. For Leon Schreier, Bill Webb, Eddie Caginelli, my partner Ken Singleton, our fine crew here in Kansas City, Jim Cott, saying so long. New York Yankees baseball has been brought to you by the Dime, the bank that's with you all the way, by the 68,000 professionals at Delta Airlines, by the Discover Card, by your Tri-State GMC dealers, comfortably in command, and by Nobody Beats the Wiz Home Entertainment Center. No, I don't need vinyl siding. This is an apartment. I can't get away from these salesmen. I'm Jim. Hi, Jim. This is for you. Hello. Make sure you deal with a pro. Like your GMC dealer. It's closer than you think. Here, let's take a look. Now, in addition to Jimmy's strength, comfort, and versatility, you get low 1.9 APR GMAC financing. 1.9%. Think how much you could save in finance charges. See your Tri-State GMC dealer. Oh, no, no. Don't get it. are coming in. It's KFC! Gotta go. Give mom more time to play. Bring home this KFC meal with eight pieces of original recipe chicken plus four kernel strips. Just $14.99. If you clean your plate, you can go out after dinner. Mother's Day. Isn't it time for some really good chicken? There's only one Jeep, and it's only at your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealer. And the Yankees win again. 
10 to 1, and they sweep the Kansas City Royals. Ramiro Mendoza with the win, and Tim Belcher took the loss. I'll tell you what, all the Yankees do is win 19 and 2 over the last 21 games, and they're the first major league team to get to 20 wins. And uh, they do it in different ways. On Friday, well, it was 2 to 1. Arabu outpitched Pat Rapp. Then yesterday, a slugfest 12 to 6. And today, really, it seemed like it was over from the very beginning. Belcher didn't have very much. And the Yankees end up winning this one 10 to 1. And uh, really, what more could you ask? Now they have the day off on Monday. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday, two games against the uh, Texas Rangers. And the Rangers also have been very hot. They lead the American League West. And that should be a pretty good test for the Yankees. But they will enjoy their off day. But before we even think about the off day, let's look at what happened today. And we'll look at the Discover playback payback. The way it started, Tony Muser had to have his say about yesterday, and that tag-up play tells Brian O'Neill exactly what he thinks. He didn't get tossed, but he did see this. Homer Bush is on first base, one out. Paul O'Neill hits the grounder to Jeff King. Jeff King's coming home, but what? Oh, the ball popped out of his hand. Loses his grip. Homer Bush scores, and the Yankees lead 1-0. In the fourth inning, Jorge Posada, 0 for 11 before this at bat, hits one deep right down the right field line. Fair or foul? It's a fair ball, and it's a 2-0 Yankee lead. In the top of the fifth, 2-1 Yankees, and Paul O'Neill finally hits his 200th career home run, his first home run of the year, his first home run since September of last year, gives the Yankees a 3-1 lead. Now on the other side, Ramiro Mendoza pitched well today. Here in the fifth inning, he strikes out Chris Turner and then does the same thing to Johnny Damon. Mendoza, seven innings pitch, three hits, one earned run. Yankees broke it up, and then the sixth inning, two outs, man on third. Scott Brosius grounds one to short. Felix Martinez throws it away, and Darryl Strawberry scores four to one. In the seventh inning, it's 7-1, Yanks. Scott Brosius gets his third hit of the game, a bloop single to center, and that scores Tim Raines, and it gives the Yankees an 8-1 lead. Then the last out of the game, well, Willie Banks was on the mound, and it was a fly ball of Bernie Williams. And Bernie Williams hauls it in nicely, and the Yankees get themselves a 10-to-1 victory. We're going to be back with Susan Waldman, who's working the Yankee clubhouse right now. She'll be back with the clubhouse report. So really, why would you go anywhere else? Yankees 10, Royals 1. You are watching the Jeep and Eagle Post Game Report, brought to you by your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealer. There's only one Jeep, and it's only at your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealer. The most award-winning brand of 4x4s has done it again. Presenting Jeep Grand Cherokee, just named best sport utility. And now you can lease the leader with a special $319 a month leadership lease or get 1.9% financing. Grand Cherokee, highest in owner loyalty and now named best sport utility. No wonder year after year, Grand Cherokee always winds up on top. Check out this 319 lease at your dealer. Hi, Rick Majerus, coach of the Utah Utes. I've got a big appetite for sports, but an even bigger appetite for Fox Sports News. Midnight's on MSG. Got a project at home? You'll be amazed at all the things you can rent. Think of the money you'll save instead of buying. Renting. It's the smart way to get things done. For all your equipment needs, it's Duran's Rental with three locations, East Henrietta Road, Dewey Avenue, and Penfield Road. Wouldn't it be nice if everything were guaranteed like cable service? Sorry to keep you waiting. Here's $20. I'm sorry your table wasn't ready. Your dinner will be free. It would be nice, but only your cable company offers you these guarantees. On-time service appointments or $20 refund. Guaranteed. And on-time installation or it's free. Guaranteed. Too bad everything isn't guaranteed like cable service. Sorry we're late, folks. This flight will be free.
baseball, where are you? This portable Iowa music system features a dual CD changer, double cassette deck, digital tuner, remote control, and Q sound for 3D enhancement. Call 1-800-BUY-IOWA. The Yankees win 10-1, 19-2 now in the last 21 games. Mendoza the win. Belcher the loss. Home runs by Posada and O'Neill. Yankees get 13 hits and they sweep the Royals. And it is now time for the Marriott Marquis Clubhouse Report, Broadway's biggest hit. And Susan Waldman was in the clubhouse moments ago. And where else to start but with the manager of the Yankees, Joe Torre. Board and you see one run on, on three hits, but it looks sort of like Mendoza threw a lot of pitches, a little struggling. Well, I, you know what I think, uh, Susan, I think he just, you know, when we tell him to work hard, I think sometimes he misunderstands and throws it hard. Uh, so I think he was just overthrowing at times. Plus, it looked like the strike zone was a little stingy today, too. But I thought he was fine. I mean, when, when he just let it go and let the ball sink. He was he was terrific. Got a lot of ground balls. Did he get better as the game went on? He, his pace seemed to pick up. Yeah, he did. I, he was working faster, uh, you know, all game. But I, I think he got a little better because it may have t taken the edge off a little bit, and he was just not trying to do too much. So you put in Homer Bush, a couple of hits, starts it off. Yeah, he gives you energy. You know, he's the guy you plug in, and, uh, you know, he's going to run hard and play hard. And, you know, he gave us a lift. A big play, as it turned out, was the bunt with two out. Good to see Paul get that first, Tomer. Yeah, and, and I thought he had a second one, too. That there must be something going on up in the air today because uh, that ball he crushed, but it just didn't go anywhere. And yeah, I was happy to see him get off the hook. Now we need, uh, you know, Bernie to do it. Does this kind of a measure that this team, no matter who you put in there, just seem to just to contribute? Well, it it doesn't surprise me. You know, it, it amazes me how, you know, how many games we can win in a streak. Even though we go out there every day, we like to think we're starting today, and we've had a pretty good approach to every game. How good a test will Texas be coming up? Well, they're good, and, and you know, aside from the playoffs down there, we've, uh, you know, it's never been a favorite place of ours, but, you know, if we're ever going to go in there and play, this is the time to do it. Well, Joe Torrey, uh, obviously calm and collected. He is now the manager of a 20-win team, 20 and 6 right now, the best record in the uh, in the major leagues and we're joined now by Susan Waldman who was just in the Yankee clubhouse and uh, Susan you're telling me off the air that uh, kind of playfully all over Homer Bush as he walked in after the interview here on MSG. Oh that was so terrific and this is a kid who has wanted to contribute so badly Michael and I went to talk to him a little bit and all of a sudden Daryl's going yay Homer and Derek is, is kidding him and I guess before the game he said that everybody came up to him they knew it was his first start Posada and Daryl and Jeter they really made him feel like a part of this team. And the nice thing before the game, Michael, he told me, I convinced my mom to stay one more day. I thought maybe with a day game after a night game, he might give me the start. He knew that Chuck was a little banged up. So he said, Mom, please stay one more day. And she did. And so it's, it's terrific to see things like that. A good day for Homer Bush. Good day for the Yankees. Also, you would say a pretty good day for Ramiro Mendoza. I think he's got to feel the hot breath of El Duque on his back. And uh, I guess he fends him off for a while. You know, I'm not sure that he feels that. I think he knows that, that he can pick pitch and I'm not really sure that he cares whether he's a starter or a reliever. They all say they want to be a starter but I'm not sure he cares. The thing about Mendoza is and Tori would just mention this he thinks work harder means throw harder and it doesn't and what Mel Stottlemyre and Joe Tori try and tell Ramiro is to calm down. Don't throw the ball through the backstop. When you look at it Michael you are calling this game one run on three hits. To me he looked like he was struggling and then you look up and it's one run on three hits pretty good but he throws a lot of pitches. He got better as the game went on, I think, as he got a little tired. You know what's interesting, too, is we, we do put a lot of pressure on Mendoza saying that El Duque is coming, but Mendoza's on this team no matter what. I guess the guy who should feel some pressure is the guy who pitched the ninth inning, Willie Banks, because if Ramiro Mendoza moves to the bullpen, I don't know what happens to Banks. Well, Willie Banks will get another job. He's a good pitcher, and I'm sure they can get something for Willie Banks. There's a lot of shoddy pitching in this league, and if Willie Banks goes out every single time,
time and gives a nice performance, he'll go someplace. It probably won't be here because you know that Hernandez is coming. I'm still pointing to that weekend against Florida. You know Levon and Orlando Hernandez is going to be too much for the Yankees to, to not do. Now let, let's talk a little bit about Paul O'Neill because we're in the clubhouse every day and really Paul O'Neill could go eight for ten and still whine about something and uh, he was crying the last couple days about no home run so he finally gets on track. Well he said that he hit the second one <laughs> harder than the first one and I think he's still looking out to right field. This is a guy and we've joked about this for five years. If he gets a single he thinks he should have hit a double. If he gets a double he should have hit a triple. If he gets a triple he should have hit a home run and if he hits a home run he didn't hit it far enough. And and the second one he said you know I, I hit it better than the other one. Why didn't it go out? And he he's uh, but if you have 25 guys like Paul O'Neill, you're going to win a lot of games. And that's why George Steinbrenner calls him a warrior. And who could ever forget that series against the Indians? Susan, you just spoke with O'Neill. And why don't we listen to that conversation that took place moments ago in the Yankee clubhouse? Which is better, homer number one or homer number 200, which they both were? Homer number one. I just, uh, I've been putting a lot of pressure on myself to, you know, you get late, going in the season this long and just start wondering if it's ever going to happen and it makes it a little more difficult. And then, I hit the second one better than I hit the first one. Didn't go. So you, I, you looked a little. I don't understand the game right now. It's you weird. looked a little surprised at the second one. You were staring at it. You couldn't believe that it didn't go out. It, it made no sense to me. The ball was carrying, and for some reason that inning it didn't. So uh, I guess I gotta be happy I got the first one out. I mean, we, we swept another series. Uh, Dozer threw the ball great. I mean, uh, we got a day off tomorrow. Things are uh, things are good right now. Does it kind of amaze you that no matter who Joe seems to put in there or put up, so everybody contributes? Well, I mean that's that's uh, means we have depth. I mean we we've got some guys that can play the game. Uh, we got guys that are everyday players on other teams that are they're here or coming off the bench and hitting grand slams or pinch running here and doing the right thing. I mean that's that all comes with uh, just putting the right people in the right positions here. And I, I think it, 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 you have to say a lot for the front office and the management for bringing this team together. How good a test will playing Texas be right now? Well, I mean, it's it's a test of, no matter who you play. I mean, you go out there to win a game. Obviously, they're 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 scoring a lot of runs and uh, they're playing well. So anytime you know two good teams get together and they're playing well, it should be fun. He's a beauty. I feel so sorry for Neville, his wife. I mean, he's never happy. He's never happy. It's a home run. He wanted the second one. No, he's one. never satisfied. He's never satisfied. But you never see him smile that much. <laughs> now, one guy who hit a home run today, along with O'Neill, was Jorge Posada. He was 0 for 11 coming into this game, or 0 for 10. Then he, he made out his first time. He looked like he was over swinging a lot, Susan. And I'm wondering that you think you know, start one catcher one day, start another another day. You think that might be hurting them offensively? Well, I'm not sure it, it does. And, and I think that they're both going to have to get used to this. And I think Joe Torre wants to see Posada go through these little slumps. And the fact that he came out of it, he's learning. And Torre, he's pulled all the right strings and pushed all the right buttons so far. You'll see Girardi in there. He'll he'll obviously catch Cone. But you always put Posada in there, I think, with Mendoza. I think he does very, very well with Arabu. And uh, the home run really helped him. And an awful lot. And when he stops over swinging and just meets the ball, and of course it was from the left side, and he's much better as a lefty, and that had to take a lot of weight off of his shoulders. I really wonder if if you played one guy all the time, if they would completely break out of it. I think Posada would be a much steadier hitter, and now Girardi is under 200, so he might see two games from what Joe Torre told me before. They might start him against Cone or with Cone, and also with David Wells. Tell me quickly about Louis Soho. I mean, it was pretty big to get him in a game finally, and he and Swain need to get some at bats. Well, Louis. Louis Soho needs to play a little bit. I think now maybe you can give Derek Jeter a day off if you need to. You saw Knobloch get the day off to today. You don't give them both the day off at the same time. But now that Soho has been in there, maybe you can do that one day on this road trip. All right. When we return, Susan and I are going to talk about the upcoming series against the Rangers. It should be a beauty Tuesday and Wednesday night. What's Ansky? What? What the hell is Ansky? Oh, oh this, this. This guy didn't do good at all. Slide back. Slide back. Oh, sweat. Oh, my God. Hey, what is that? There you go. Nice, right? Yanks. Yanks. Yanks! Let's go, guys! Hey kids, are you a Rangers fan? Then you've got to join the Rangers Kids Fan Club presented by Modell Sporting Goods. Check out all the cool stuff you get. Rangers merchandise, a full color team photo, 
school folder, bumper stickers, four annual newsletters, membership certificate and ID card, a personalized birthday card, and much more. Check out the fun. The Rangers Kids Club, presented by Modell Sporting Goods. Call 201-784-9600 or register at your local Modell Sporting Goods. Join today. Ten seconds remaining. Allen Houston at three. Bang! Allen Houston ties it up. You're watching MSG Network. We're all over it. We understand the need for businesses to have computers that are reliable and work correctly in a cost-effective manner. Since we're a systems integrator, we can tailor a computer to meet your needs, and our certified technicians provide you the service and support if you should need it. Before you spend a lot of money on a computer, make sure it's something that can keep up with the changing times. So if you're looking for service, upgrades, or a complete system, why not do what these local companies have already done? Come to Chip's Computer Store, 779 Spencer Port Road and Gates. Call us at 429-5910. Expensive habit, hard to quit, gotta find a way. And I really get off on this stuff. Makes me feel good. Gonna be a good time, I'm a winner today. Hey, this was a sure thing. What am I gonna do now? More than a quarter million New Yorkers are addicted to this kind of pot. If gambling is a problem for you or someone you care about, call 1-800-437-1611. The Problem Gambling Helpline, hope for you and yours. The Jeep and Eagle Post Game Report, brought to you by your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealer. There's only one Jeep, and it's only at your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealer. The Yankees win it 10-1. They're now 20-6 atop the American League East by a game and a half over the Red Sox. Mendoza the win, Belcher the loss. And take a look at the kids running the bases here at Kauffman Stadium and scoring a lot more runs than the Royals did over the last couple of days. Big series coming up, Susan. Yankees have the day off tomorrow. They travel to Texas right now after the game. And I'm looking forward to um, Tuesday's game. It's going to be David Cohn and uh, John Burkett. And the, this is a real good test for the Yankees because this is a very good team. I'm looking forward to a couple of things, Michael. Of course, we know about the offense in uh, Pudge Rodriguez and, and Gonzalez. But I'm interested to see about these running Yankees against a really good catcher. I mean, there's nobody better than Pudge Rodriguez. I want to see how many bases they steal, how many extra bases they take with Pudge Rodriguez behind the plate, and I think that's their biggest test. And it'll be a big test for David Cohn and then David Wells up against a very good lineup that the Rangers put together. And have you been watching John Wetland lately? I saw him closing out a game, that high fastball is back, and he's got that little slider and the curve going. So uh, they're a good team, and I think this is going to be a great test for the Yankees. Susan, thanks. See you on the bus. Thank you, Michael. I'll be there. I'll hold your seat. All right. That's Susan Waldman with the clubhouse report. A great job by her. And you've been watching the post-game report, and the post-game we talked about the Yankees beating the Royals 10-1, to 19-2 in their last 21. Our next game, we mentioned it Tuesday night, 8 p.m. is the Yankees Marriott scorecard, and uh, Yankees Rangers will follow at 8.30. Now, listen to this. Tonight at 7, a special MSG sports desk. Al Trowick will tell you all about the Knicks' 98-81 victory over the Heat in Game 5 as the Knicks move on to play Indiana in a best of seven in the second round. Up next, all pro sports on MSG. Now the ATP Tour, AT&T Challenge, which was supposed to be on next, well, that'll be seen at 8 o'clock. You got that? Write it down. Good. Now they're explaining to Ramiro Mendoza, here's how you pitch. Yeah. Now here's Jorge Posada. Here's how you hit. Break out of an 0 for 11 slump with a home run. Nice way to do it. Bernie Williams, how about a catch a day for him? A little ice cream cone on a beautiful summer day. And Arabu says, hey, you pitch like me. Not a bad job. And Paul O'Neill, all right, finally, stop it, Paul. There's your home run, number 200, the first of the 1998 season. Still, he's still not happy. Would you stop? But look at Homer Bush, though. Homer Bush is happy. So is Willie Randolph. They're smiling because the Yankees have won 10-1, to 1, and they're 20-6. and 6. Good afternoon, everybody.